With the pinning and the IK blending, you can also create some nice uh, overlapping effect. So here, let's say I want to create some kind of stop where my character uh, compresses down, then uh, goes up and uh, settles. And I want to start overlapping the, the chest. So I can hand key that compression and I'm going to ignore the pinning so that uh, when I move my chest, the, the arm and the head also rotates like if they were in, in local space. So I just have some compression on the chest right now. I can make it a bit stronger. And the rest uh, of the limbs, like the, the arms and the head, follow one on one because I've been animating without any pinning. But I still have some IK blend. Like I put some IK blend on the translation, on the rotation of the shoulders. So if I go in body part and I start offsetting those keys for the uh, the body parts independently, I'm going to start creating some overlap and follow through. So I can offset the head like this. Maybe a key here next to the first key and offset that to hold that first pose a bit longer. And I can do the same on the arms. So maybe I'm going to take both arms, extend the timeline and just uh, drag those keys around. Fine tune per arm. Unless I want to delay the weapon a bit more, I can always bake that result on the right arm, put back the IK a translation rotation, and then in Selection mode, you can uh, just select the rotation. And now if I tune that, maybe uh, remove the snapping. I can delay the rotation of my weapon. Here I have a walk cycle uh, that's a little bit stiff on the shoulders and on the neck. And let's say I want to create some overlap on this. I can do it for free using a trick with the IK blending. So I'm gonna take my curves for the, the shoulder, okay? So what I can do is uh, taking, for example, the, the Y translation, which is the up axis, and offset that. Nothing happens yet because the translation is not driving the shoulder. So if I go back and activate the translation and I move those keys, suddenly something happens on the shoulder. You can see that uh, I'm actually delaying the shoulder. So now I create this overlap effect. Of course, it's very strong right now. So I can either uh, unsnap here the keys by selecting apply and frames and move them slightly. So the effect is very subtle. But that means that I have like in between keys and, and so at some points uh, when you have keys like too close to each other, it disappears from the timeline. So that may not the most intuitive way of working. You can also uh, maybe go crazy with it and move it like two frames. So the effect is very strong, but then turn, turn down the effect here on the IKEA plan. So you can see that my right shoulder is a lot more solo than the left shoulder. And a third technique, and that's the one I actually recommend, is instead of shifting those keys on the base layer, is duplicate your base layer, right click and say uh, layer mode override. If you don't do that, your character explodes because uh, this is additive data, so you want to override. And now I want to do the effect on the override layer on both shoulders, and I can tone down the effect of the whole layer. So maybe just do it like 13 or 20% or a bit more. This way I can always come back and compare with the original layer in just one click. And uh, you can see that on the first two frames, 
there are some keys missing because I, I moved my curves and they are not looping so there are two keys missing so when I go at the end of my timeline there's a pop between the first and the last frame one way to fix that is to select maybe all your curves except the Z translation because the Z translation is actually going forward so it's not looping and uh, right click and say pre post extrapolation so that's the infinite curves in Maya so you can set it to infinite and repetition now you can see that my curves are actually uh, repeating beyond the, the beginning and end and it's now properly looping I can do this on the head as well I can increase manually the, the intensity of the curve so I can take it and, and go beyond its original values and when you do this uh, right now my head is still very stable in terms of rotation because the rotation I kept line is still at the maximum if I start turning that down my head suddenly starts tilting because it, it tried to keep the original uh, local rotation relative to the neck so now I also have some some kind of rotation bubble I keep the effects super strong here to, to show you the difference and if I want I could always like bake that all put back in rotation and translation at the maximum then take my rotation repetition and offset that so now I even have a delay in the rotation and if I find it too strong I can also tone down the whole effect once again by adding another override layer uh, adding maybe repositioning the head slightly and adding a key so now my head is back to stable uh, of course because I have IK translation it's try to stay back here in space so what I can do is uh, disable the translation add a key at the beginning and at the end uh, make sure they are uh, linear and now when I re-add some of that stability just a little bit of stability My head is kind of stable again and I can tone down that layer and I have some wobble but it's it's way uh, more subtle 